Good morning, and thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, thank you to Attorney General Andrea Campbell for joining us as well, alongside our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh, Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Robbie Goldstein, our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones, Healthcare leaders, including Steve Walsh of the Massachusetts Health and Hospital Association, Michael Curry of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers, advocates for our dedicated hospital and healthcare workers, including Julie Pinkham of the Massachusetts Nurses Association and Tim Foley of SCIU 1199. Healthcare for All's Amy Rosenthal is also with us here this morning. And in this room, I see many more patient and community advocates, among others. Thank you all for being here today. We're here this morning because very early this morning, Stewart Healthcare moved forward with a national bankruptcy filing. This bankruptcy is something that our administration has been preparing for. Stewart currently operates eight hospitals in Massachusetts, which collectively employ 16,000 people and serve 200,000 patients annually. I want to be clear, steward hospitals remain open. Patients should keep your appointments, continue to seek care when you need it at these facilities. I want to repeat, hospitals are operating as usual. And the Department of Public Health remains on site at these facilities to ensure that they are providing the highest standard of care that all Massachusetts patients are entitled to. In addition, Stewart is taking steps to retain providers and staff as we are engaged with all of them working to make sure that happens. I want to say how grateful I am to the nurses, the doctors, staff and others working at these facilities. Men and women who come to work and have come to work, and I know will continue to come to work each day, focused on providing excellent care to our residents and patients in need. Now last week, we announced that our Dep Department of Public Health had activated its emergency operations plan. An incident command system is now in place to organize efforts to ensure that steward hospitals and regional health care systems are maintaining quality care and services. Moving forward, the purpose of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing is to provide an orderly way to deal with debts and liabilities and to potentially transfer ownership while continuing to operate and serve patients. Ultimately, this is a step toward our goal of getting Stewart out of Massachusetts. And it allows us to do that, to protect access to care, preserve jobs, and stabilize our healthcare system. Of course, we cannot guarantee that there won't be disruptions or inconveniences. And I understand that members of the public are concerned about what this means for them and their families in terms of accessing care. But that's why I want to be very clear in telling the public that these hospitals will remain open and folks should continue to keep their appointments and seek care as needed, including if you need to see an emergency room. Our commitment from this administration is to be open, transparent, and responsive to our communities every step of the way. For that purpose, we will have information and resources in place for patients, for workers, and for community members. Secretary Walsh and Commissioner Goldstein will share more about those steps. I don't want to lose sight of the fact that this situation stems from and is rooted in greed, mismanagement, and lack of transparency on the part of steward leadership in Dallas, Texas. I've been clear about that. I'll continue to be clear about that. It's a situation that should never have happened, and we'll be working together to ensure that there are steps taken to make sure that this does not happen again. But the focus for today and in this process is protecting health care, protecting workers, protecting patients, protecting every community that depends on our hospitals in Massachusetts. This has been and remains an urgent priority for me, our entire administration, and all of our partners. This is a national company and a national filing. 
we will be advocating aggressively for Massachusetts interests, the interests of our patients, our consumers, our workers, and our communities throughout this bankruptcy process. As you can see today, we are all unified in that commitment to advocating for Massachusetts. A strength of this great state is our ability to work across government, across sector, to align on values, and to come together in partnership when we need to act. And that's what you are seeing today. And it is the dedicated nurses and doctors and all healthcare workers who show up to work every day to care for patients with skill and compassion, and we thank them. We are committed to using our shared values and combined energies to protect and ultimately to strengthen health care in Massachusetts, as this provides an opportunity to do just that. We're grateful to have in place experienced hospital and health care leadership, people in critical positions, and I in particular am grateful to Secretary Kate Walsh and Commissioner Robbie Goldstein for their work. I now will invite Secretary Walsh to say more about this news and our response. Thank you, Governor. Um, you've been an incredible partner throughout this process, taking my calls even when I'm pretty sure you prefer not to hear from me. But <laughs> we're very lucky to have you helming the ship. I'm going to keep this brief because we have a lot of folks to hear from today, but there's one message I want to make sure to reiterate what the governor said. The hospitals that were open yesterday remain open today. The providers who were employed yesterday remain employed today. And the community care that you could access yesterday, you can access today. Today's bankruptcy filing does not change that. What bankruptcy does mean is that a federal court in Texas will be working with Stewart's creditors, our legal representation, and others to address their financial challenges. While in the initial phases, care in Massachusetts continues as normal. It means we're also one step closer to finally getting Stewart out of Massachusetts, just as Governor Healy called for. This filing does not come as a surprise. We've been pre preparing for the possibility of bankruptcy for a while now, working closely with partners across our administration, across all the sectors, and across every level of government. We've developed very thorough contingency plans, prepping in part for this. We know there won't be a one-size-fits-all answer to this, um, and we know things won't be exactly the same on the other side, but we've coordinated our response in DPH's incident command structure to move forward with coordinated cross-government response that prioritizes patient safety, jobs, and access to care. And one that's built around regional needs, because we know the healthcare landscape in Methuen is different than the healthcare landscape in Taunton. While we know this is a national action, it's going to be especially disruptive in Eastern Mass, and we do not take that lightly. To that end, we've established a call center so the patients who have questions can get the answers they need, and we'll, uh, we'll, be, putting the, we'll be publishing that number, and, and um, the call center will be live later this afternoon. And we have um, a website already established, mass.gov backslash Stuart Resources, one word, um, which, is, which is available now. That's mass.gov backslash, backslash Stuart Resources. We're also continuing to monitor these hospitals daily to ensure that the quality of care meets the high standards you've come to expect in our state. We're sending Massachusetts representatives to the court in Texas, making sure that our local interests are advocated for and considered in, um, at, at every step of this process. And back here at home, we're laser focused on, focused on our priority, patient safety and quality, access to care, and preserving jobs. For more detail, I'm going to pass it to uh, Dr. Robbie Goldstein, our Commissioner of Public Health. We are very lucky to have Commissioner Goldstein leading the charge here. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Secretary Walsh, for your leadership and your support. And thank you, Governor Healy, for your commitment to doing what is right for patients and workers across the state. During the last few months, we've all witnessed the crescendo of rumors, questions, concerns, and theories about Stewart Healthcare in its financial instability. And at the Department of Public Health, we've been using that uncertainty to drive our planning and our preparation. When we got the news last night of Stewart's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, it was not unexpected, and we were prepared. Still, we know that this news is hard to hear. 
It's hard to hear for the many people in the Commonwealth who count on the care, services, and providers at Stewart Hospitals. It's hard to hear for the staff at these hospitals who deliver care to patients and families. It's hard to hear for the communities where Stewart Hospitals have been major employers, safety nets, and trusted pillars. And we understand that the idea of a hospital in bankruptcy may be unsettling. Yet this declaration of bankruptcy marks an important transition, resolving some of the uncertainties about how Steward will operate and moving us beyond speculation to begin the purposeful journey down the pathway towards resolution. Bankruptcy is a well-recognized orderly process. It's a roadmap to guide a transition. People in Massachusetts deserve access to health care in their communities. And I'm here to tell you that the Department of Public Health is deeply committed to preserving access to care for all patients in all communities where Stewart operates throughout this bankruptcy period and beyond. Last week, we activated our emergency operation plan and put in place an incident command structure to coordinate the work that lies ahead and to collaborate with healthcare providers and community-based organizations in the regions where Stewart operates. Together, with our many healthcare partners, we will navigate through this transition. We will do our best to keep everyone aware and informed about the work we're doing and what it means for patients and communities. Communication has already begun through our incident command structure, through the web page, and through our call center. We will continue to provide up-to-date information about the steward transition and offer helpful resources to those who are impacted. Importantly, we will keep healthcare safe in our communities. DPH monitors continue to be in the steward facilities evaluating staffing, supplies, and patient care. And I want to end by reaffirming what others have already said. Steward hospitals in this state are currently open in providing care to patients, families, and communities, just as they have been doing for many years. The dedicated staff members at these facilities have been there, working day in and day out amid the swirling rumors, the financial challenges, the barrage of news coverage, the tough questions asked by patients. These devoted professionals are there right now at the bedside, in the clinics, and in the emergency department doing what they do best, taking care of the next patient who comes through the door, and the next, and the next. We remain fully engaged and resolved to helping them fulfill this commitment to their patients and to the communities that they serve. And we'll pass now to Attorney General Campbell. Good after, or good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's already been a long day. Um, first and foremost, I just I want to recognize um, the union leadership and, and members who are here today. They, of course, represent, as has already been said, the healthcare and hospital employees who have continued to show up, and as Robbie just said, who are at the facilities right now during a very stressful time. So I want to acknowledge Tim and Julie. Just thank you for your work and your leadership. I, I just want to stress, I know this is a very difficult situation for you and your members, and you've been on the front lines since the very beginning. So thank you, and we're grateful to you. It goes without saying that if you are a patient at Stewart's facilities, if you work at Stewart's facilities, or even some of our local elected officials who represent constituents served by these facilities, you have stress right now, and rightfully so. I understand that this bankruptcy filing raises public concern. Bankruptcy, though, is a legal mechanism by which Steward may seek to restructure its operations. It does not allow Steward to immediately shut its doors and to leave town. It does not allow Steward to avoid complying with basic public health and safety laws. It is important to underscore and to remind folks, frankly, that DPH has monitored Stewart's facilities and has found them to be safe for patients to receive care. A bankruptcy filing does not change that reality and actually will only increase the state's attention to these facilities, which is a good thing. Further, bankruptcy will help bring more transparency and more stability, or may bring more stability. It will allow Stewart's hospitals to continue operations with court oversight, ensuring that Stewart does not engage in irresponsible financial behavior that threatens the hospital's safe operations. 
Bankruptcy will provide greater transparency about the extent of stewards' liabilities and existing revenue. The Commonwealth will continue to have its enforcement tools, including with respect to any sale or transfer of stewards' hospitals or physician, physician group. That said, there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of variables that we do not have control over in the bankruptcy process. And I'm not naive about that. This is not a perfect process. And it may be that some of Stewart's operations will wind down in time, which will be challenging for all of us. However, I want to stress, and I think it's really important, that any changes to Stewart's current footprint will still be subject to state law, including licensing and notice obligations, and will require court oversight and approval. And that's a good thing. My office and team have been deeply engaged throughout this process, of course, working closely with Bankruptcy Council, but also the Healy and Driscoll administration to best protect Commonwealth's interests. We will continue to work and support the efforts of Health and Human Services, the Department of Public Health, and other state partners to ensure that patients are safe and have access to health care and make sure that they are protected. We will absolutely keep advocating on behalf of patients and workers. This includes pushing for the appointment of a patient care ombudsman who will be charged with representing the interests of patients and employees during the bankruptcy proceedings, as well as helping employees get the wages they deserve and have earned. We're also working on two long-term questions. Those long-term questions are twofold. The first is how do we ensure accountability? I know the public is eager to get answers on this. And I can't at this moment talk about that work until it's complete. And when it is, you will hear from us in a timely manner and with a sense of urgency. I also want to make it crystal clear that I take it very seriously, any effort for this hospital system to make a profit to the detriment of patients, to strip mine hospitals for their value. And if those efforts have violated the law, those involved will absolutely hear from our office. And at the appropriate time, we will share that and we will share it with you, of course, in terms of that process. The second question that needs attention is how do we ensure this never happens again? That work has actually already started. And it's been a long-term conversation, even before I got into office, with the legislature and the administration that the Attorney General's office is right in the middle of. We're working with the legislature, proposing long-term policy solutions. We're pushing for tools that could be expanded to give the Commonwealth greater power while these things are happening and not after the fact. So that, for example, so that, for example, we do not again have the type of sale leasebacks that allowed Stewart and its private equity investors to cash out in the short term while saddling their hospitals with long-term debt. That also, for example, means that we understand private equity investments when they are made and novel high-risk lending arrangements before they are entered into. I commend the House for addressing these issues in their recent bill and, of course, we will continue to work with the Senate on their proposal. I also want to thank the various local officials who represent areas where these facilities are that are working tirelessly to respond to the needs and concerns of their constituents. Our immediate priority continues to be protecting access to care and jobs and working in partnership with them as well. We remain committed to evaluating the role of for-profit actors in the state's healthcare industry in the future, and this work is ongoing. And we will do this with the urgency and transparency residents across the Commonwealth absolutely deserve. It's an honor and privilege to stand here with these group of folks. Not everyone is going to speak today as we all grapple with an unprecedented time in many ways. But I, along with my team, and I'm grateful to my team, will do everything in our power to hold anyone accountable for any type of wrongdoing while working with every agency up here to ensure access to care and to protect our patients and our employees. This time, I'd love to turn it over to Julie from the Nurses Association. I think it's Julie. No, it's you. You're up. Um, it's you, just for the work you do. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Hello, everyone. Um, I apologize in advance if I get titles inappropriate, but thank you, Governor Healy, Attorney General Campbell. Thank you. And I'm getting to know Kate Walsh very well, <laughs> and Robbie Goldstein, friends. and Secretary yeah. Jones. So um, I'll be brief. Certainly, this is not the start of Nurses Week that I would have envisioned. So mm. here we go. As an organization that represents nurses and healthcare professionals working in eight of the steward hospitals and 70% of all the state's acute care facilities, the potential loss of any of these facilities would have devastating consequences for hundreds of thousands of residents from the South Shore to Southern New Hampshire. 
We need only to look at what has happened in southeastern Massachusetts with the loss of Norwood Hospital and then Brockton Hospital, where the influx of patients has stressed the region's already overburdened emergency departments to see what lies in store if we to lose any other facilities. We look forward to working with the administration, the legislature, the healthcare industry, and all those who value the health of our communities to use this process to take whatever steps are needed to ensure the preservation of these facilities and the safe transition to more stable, not-for-profit ownership. Inaction would worsen the healthcare inequities and weaken the entire healthcare infrastructure for all the patients of Massachusetts. Most importantly, we commend the dedicated and compassionate caregivers, healthcare workers, nurses, and physicians who throughout this incredibly difficult and stressful process have stayed the course. They will continue to provide desperately needed care. As this process unfolds, the voices of the patients, the workforce, and the community must be heard, and they must have a seat at the table as decisions about the future of healthcare in these communities are made. We remain hopeful, and we look forward to transitioning these hospitals to new ownership. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning still, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well on this uh, Monday morning. Uh, my name is Tim Foley. I'm the Executive Vice President of 1199 SCIU. We represent over 85,000 healthcare, home care, and nursing home workers throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we represent, uh, and on behalf of the nearly 5,000 healthcare workers of 1199 who work at all of the Stewart Healthcare facilities, I want to thank our leaders gathered here today, uh, particularly to the governor, the attorney general, the secretary, and the commissioner for all your support, your hard work, and thoughtful preparation for this day, and your sp support for the 1199 caregivers. Uh, also, as well as for your commitment to the patients, the caregivers, and the communities these hospitals serve, critically important hospitals throughout many of our gateway cities throughout the Commonwealth, critical uh, hospitals and healthcare workers deliver care every single day. So thank you for all your, your work to date, and I know the work will continue uh, because we're all in this together. I know that uh, all of us here today, and many who are not here and some who are gathered in the audience, are ready to work together in collaboration to navigate all the challenges before us because, like I said, we're all in this together. The governor, the attorney general, the state legislative leadership, the Mass Nurse Association, 1199 SCIU, and the entire healthcare uh, community are unified in our goals. And those seem to me to be three, uh, to protect access to community healthcare services throughout the Commonwealth, to protect vital healthcare jobs throughout the Commonwealth, and to support the communities and residents these hospitals have served for generations, some over 100 years. Uh, during these challenging times, uh, the healthcare workers of 1199 SCIU, have you heard uh, earlier, along with the doctors, the RNs, and the local hospital management, continue to provide quality healthcare services throughout the Commonwealth. We remain committed to protecting care in our communities, and we stand prepared to work with all stakeholders to ensure a successful transition of these hospitals to new ownership to maintain their important role they play in our healthcare delivery system. So thank you for your time and attention to this important issue, and thank you for all the leaders that are gathered here with us today, unified in those three priorities to protect care, protect jobs, and support these communities during these challenging times. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everyone. We're happy to open it up for questions. Uh, shortly after 3.30, they filed in Texas, and we were alerted to that shortly after 3.30. And how do you, um, what happens to these hospitals moving forward? I think everyone wants to know what's, what's going to happen with these hospitals and this, this, the way this rent system has you know, where some hospitals have to pay rent to these landowners. How are you going to convince other citizens to take these orders? Well, I think we need to take this a step at a time. We're here today, and I think it's significant that you have such unity up here on the stage reflecting all aspects of the system. Um, our workforce, those from the administration in charge of administering health and health and, and health care around the state, our attorney general's office, a hospital association, our community health centers, and this is going to be about Massachusetts teamwork. What it looks like today will look different on the other side of this. That's what bankruptcy is for, though. We've got a situation where, you know, this is a, um, a failed management team and a failed institution that has just incurred a boatload of debt. 
and that will work itself through through the bankruptcy process. In the meantime, what will not change is that these hospitals will remain open, patients should continue to access them for care, and we will be looking to work to further the Massachusetts interests, which have always been about protecting patients, protecting the stability of our healthcare market here in Massachusetts, and protecting our workforce. Governor Healy, you say you're sending representatives down to the, the bankruptcy court in Texas. How much influence do you think Massachusetts can have over this reorganization? I mean, I think your top priority is about dealing with creditors. I'm just kind of curious, do you expect to have some sort of formal role in the actual, or say, in the actual reorganization? Business. Well, there are a couple things going on at once. One is just the administration of health care right here in Massachusetts and how we're managing that, how we're working through that in terms of workforce and personnel, in terms of management of these facilities, and in terms of ensuring continuity of care. So that is going to continue. When it comes to the court proceeding, um, we will be making the appropriate filings and we will be advocating as strongly and as aggressively as possible for Massachusetts interests, and those interests are patients, jobs, and the stability of the health care market. But you also said you want Stewart out of Massachusetts. I mean, I, is that part of your advocacy? Your well, that's, that's something I've long advocated for based on the greed and really despicable conduct of their CEO and their management team in Dallas. Um, that said, this bankruptcy filing today represents a step towards that orderly transition of Stewart out of the Massachusetts healthcare market. So how concerned, I, everybody said, keep on going to Stewart, keep on going to your providers, but how concerned are you? If I'm a patient, I hear that, I'm gonna freak out and say, well, I'm gonna try to go to that mass general breakdown or go someplace else. How concerned are you that patients are going to go to the other hospitals that are already overburdened? Well, this is why my message is to people to go to these hospitals. And if you don't take it from me, you can take it from a real doctor who's gonna to speak to you because mm -hmm. Uh, we take this very seriously. We take people's safety and their ability to access quality, safe health care in this state very seriously. And it's why we've had monitors on site for weeks now through our Department of Public Health. But we want to strongly encourage people to continue to seek help at these facilities. Commissioner Goldstein, would you like to add anything or Secretary Walsh to that? I will just reiterate what you said, which is that we've had monitors for over four months now in each of the facilities across the state, and they report daily on the conditions of the hospital, the staffing, the supplies, the policies, the procedures that are in place. We're in constant communication with all of the local hospital leadership. We want people to hear from the Department of Public Health. It is safe to get care in steward facilities. The facilities are open. You should not drive past it if you're having chest pain, if you're a pregnant person about to deliver. Please go to the hospital that's closest to you. Go to the hospital that's in your community. Governor, you said that disruptions and inconveniences could potentially happen here. Is there any specifics that you're watching for or something that patients should be aware of that could happen over the next few months? I'll let the team speak to this, but I just want to acknowledge the reality to everyone. When you wake up to news that this major hospital system in Massachusetts has filed bankruptcy, that can cause a lot of alarm and concern among residents. But I wanted to be here today with our team to tell people that we have been preparing for this. We have taken steps with partners to prepare for this, that hospitals remain open, that patients should continue to seek care. In terms of inconveniences and disruptions, um, that's always a possibility and my commitment and our administration's commitment to the public is to working through all of that in the weeks and the months ahead. Is there anything specific that you guys are watching for at all? You know, I, I want to recognize um, the uh, leadership of the insurer community that's also been a big part of our partnership. Mm -hmm. Blue Cross is here, Mass Association of Health Plans. And I think that people worry about how they're going to pay for health care. And I think that's part of the commitment we've made in the state with universal coverage. So I think we're we're trying to make sure that everything that is great about Massachusetts health care continues through this period of uncertainty and that we use this this challenge as an opportunity to stabilize the system in Eastern Mass. Stewart's challenges are unique and pretty pretty gargantuan right now, but they're n they're not the only health system that we're 
we're worried about and trying to support. So we see opportunity here in partnership with the insurers, in partnership with health centers, in partnership with other hospitals. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be more to come, but I think the other thing that bankruptcy gives us is much more transparency on what will happen next, as opposed to kind of tr having only one side of that story. I think that mm -hmm. the lawyers would, would, would echo that. So we're, we're looking forward to, you know, there's things we don't know, but we'll learn quickly and we'll share that with the public as soon as we know. I think the, um, we've, we've referenced it several times, but making sure that there are, there's adequate staff to care for patients, doctors, nurses, you know, people who work in central supply, people who work at front desk, people who pass trays, people who answer the phone in clinic. You know, there's a lot of vacancies in this job market right now. Uh, Secretary Jones is with us today, and we, we want to make sure that people uh, continue, you know, people will do what's right for their family, and right now, it is, if you're working at a Stewart Hospital, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, if, if that needs to change, we'll, we'll talk to people. But right now, this is, right, the, the most important thing is making sure that the healthcare workforce in our state, across our state, is supported. Governor, one question, you said you uh, supported Dr. Jason Center last night. I was trying to get a clarity on when Well, he's a doctor. It's just a definition of morning or night. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's 3.30 a.m. to you? No, 3.30. 4, 4, 4 a.m. Shortly, think, yeah, probably. They, they filed. They pushed the button on uh, yeah. an electronic filing in the Texas Federal District Court uh, this morning at 3.30. Was there any surprising from anyone about the timing? It sounds like you knew this day was ultimately coming. Any surprising there? We didn't know exactly when it was coming. It was something that we certainly had prepared for um, as a uh, scenario that was increasingly likely. You know, one of the good things about bankruptcy is that Steward and its CEO and its management team will no longer be able to lie. And transparency is really important here. And that's why, you know, we're, we uh, look forward to seeing what is in the various documents that will be before the court because we need transparency, we need clarity about debts and liabilities as we assess opportunities and restructuring as we go forward. Again, our focus is going to be on protecting patients, protecting jobs, protecting the stability of the workforce, and I want to again encourage patients to continue to seek care, go for those scheduled procedures. When I was speaking of inconvenience, people might wake up this morning and be inconvenienced by that and wondering, do I need to call and rebook somewhere else? The answer to that is no. People should continue to seek their care, to go to those appointments. And if you're experiencing any uh, emergent situation, you should absolutely go to a Stewart Hospital. So again, I want to thank the public for their, um, for their patience in this time and their understanding too in this time of what's happening. Know that we will be as transparent and communicative with all information as we can possibly be. And again, thank you to the healthcare workforce, to nurses, to physicians, to all the staff who make these facilities go. People are counting on you. Families are counting on you. You've been there. You've been showing up. You've been doing the work under challenging circumstances. We thank you so much for continuing to show up, and we will do all that we can to support this incredibly important workforce. Thank you, everybody.